Are you tired of your everyday routine? Bored by the news? Ever want to escape to a life of romantic adventure? Then escape with us now to a world of foreign intrigue, western romance, dark, dingy city streets, light years of adventure, and many more on... Golden Age Radio Theater. Written by Avery S.M. Martinez. And brought to you through the KDUR Radio at Fort Lewis College. Tonight, we escape with you off to a radio station in the northeastern section of the USA where two DJs unfortunately discover the hidden secrets of the ancient world. As Avery S. M. Martinez tells it to you in his horrifying tale, there's something in the air. And that was the new hit single by Carving Up the Rhinestone, Atomic Longing. You're tuned into FM 90- 109.2, 89.1 K-Jam, The Jam. I'm your host, Ricky X, and cruising with me at this altitude of pure emotion is my co-pilot, the wonderful Miss Amy J. hey this is Amy J, and the time is now currently 8.03 p.m. on this Sunday evening. We're along with you on the Electric Slide, our weekly show here on The Jam, where we bring you the best in music. <sighs> <laughs> That's right, AJ. And we're very happy to be on our second week at the new radio station that you're tuned into, KJAM. Yes, sir. We're happy to be a part of this awesome new radio station starting up from the old. Now we got an announcement from our sponsors in the station management, and then we'll get into some good old-fashioned tunes. Straight from the big man himself, station director Vince Ursel. Hello out there, Radio Land, and thank you for your support in the creation of this locally owned and operated new radio station, K-Jam, bringing all the beauty and power of radio back to the people. We're glad to be jamming with you tonight, and every day, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, with the best music and DJs that we can put together. We're glad to reopen KJAM, the only radio station originally built here in 1932 by Delta Mutual Broadcasting Company. After going off the air in 1938 due to inexplicable circumstances, we're glad to be KJAMming with you once again. With all your love, Director Vince Ursel. Peace. Shout out to Vincey. Man, you are so chill and the best boss this DJ's ever had. Not sugar talking, just laying it down that this guy cares more about K-Jam and radio more than any cat I've ever met. Now a word from Alpine Roofing and Repair, your local hometown roof company. If you need a hole fixed, you need a plug added, you need shingles from tin, invite them in. They're here 24 hours a day, 6 days a week to help you fix your beautiful house. Now back to the music. Nothing as quite ever heard as bad as this Didn't really understand that I would be so mess Today I woke up early, spoke out on the air Hoping to reach you, but I guess that wasn't fair Played some Mr. Davis and a little swing. I'm out of ways to talk to you, but I'll try one more thing. I'll play some songs on the radio, and even though I know what you want to hear, what you want to hear.
branches glow in the morning light and the news plays as I leave the
say there's things you cannot see, but I say you see more than Fly from your fingers And still you worry You say there's things You cannot see See more the most the world you see doesn't stop with your eyes you with your hands can make angels fly. deserve a song for the world you've shown for the world you've shown for the world you've shown And we're back! Here on KJAM, broadcasting our second show here at KJAM since 1938. Man, my grandma was only 12 years old then. Mine was nothing more than a gleam in the eye, AJ. <laughs> ah, nice. <laughs> anyway, check this. Me and Amy were doing some searching around our new home and discovered some sick old radio equipment in the supply closet in the basement. And even cooler... We found we... a bunch of homemade records in a box listed as 1938. Inside, we found a picture of the original crew. If you're interested, it'll be up on our studio website tied to our sister station in Durango, Colorado. KDUR 91.9 at the KDUR website. Check it out. Oh, they're all so cool and classy looking. Ah, oh, so old school. Let's check out this song, one of my favorite tunes of all time. Enjoy. From me to you. She was as lovely as a lily and made anything grow. Even in Heart of snow. The garden was full of love and marigolds, of greens and things to eat, and a hammock where we'd sleep. A three, a four. She saved the planet jade. It was mangled, torn, and ripped. But on her waters it sits. Brought it back from the black, and it grew till it seemed new. The garden was full of love and marigolds. Of greens and things to eat in a hammock where we'd sleep Two, three, four Of her heart, a 
two, a three, a four. Welcome back! We've opened the box and found something pretty awesome. A couple of awesome old radio mics and of course several records. But even more so, the amazing fact is they were made here in the studio. So breaking away from our usual stuff, we're going to take a look at these old records and see what amazing stories they might hold. I'll cue up the old vinyl player. Sick! While the lovely Amy does this, I'll read this note on the inside of the box lid. To whomever should read this note, beware. Inside is a cautionary tale. Do not make the same mistakes that I have made. Go and quickly... What in the hell? What was that, Ricky? Uh... Uh, someone wrote a note trying to scare us. Oh? Oh, well. Is the old machine ready? Yeah, I just queued up the record. Here we go. Hello? Howard, hello? Hello? Is this thing recording? Yes? Uh, well, y yes, okay. Well, hello there. My name is Edward King, news anchor for KJAM, the newly founded radio station of Arkham. The date is October 11th, 1923. I only mention the date because I do not know when we will be reviewing these recordings. Aside from that, I will give some information as to my general physical appearance at the time of this recording, beginning at 11... 26 p.m. I am nearly 30 years of age, dark hair, dark eyes. I am making these recordings in secret on the studio's new piece of photograph recording equipment without the management's knowing. I warn whoever is listening to this record that there may have been strange goings on in the station recently. Not but a week ago, Porter Kane, the technician, uh, was electrocuted nearly to death by a plug, a regular occurrence in the radio game. But, uh, he wasn't working on it. He was looking at it. Not three hours ago, Dottie Ledoux, the station secretary, was suddenly struck by one of the shelves with the phonographic discs falling upon her head. She was nearly 50 feet from the shelf. Myself, an hour ago, giving the news of the local college's victory over our rival school, the on-air station light exploded without cause, nearly causing a fire in the studio. I was quick enough to snuff it out with my coat. Howard and I are the two in agreement that something is wrong. Howard is an expert in the unexpected. Miss Ledoux and myself are the only two who seem to acknowledge... Oh my god! Howard, quickly! The water bucket! I'll save the equipment! What was that? <laughs> uh, uh, I'm gonna call Mr. Ursula. I think someone's trying to give us the creeps. Yeah, yeah. well... Well, huh. well, while you do that, I'm going to play some music. Whew. Enjoy this. The room goes silver and the words melt away And from beyond the grave The first movie magicians take the stage Love without lies and the only way to tell Someone you love them is to show them every day Chaplin and Malays led the way To a world two bits simpler While just the same some say I just want the love in the silent movies Where love is true and blue Black and white, all the same The lack of sound may be plain But for me it's nothing short of a dream Love with our lies and the only way to tell Someone you love them is to show them every day Love with our lies and the only way to tell Someone you love them is to show them every day If I was a sailor on the open sea Would you 
you follow me. And if I was all alone, I would never make it home. Sailor on the sea, who oh, would you follow me? If I was all alone, I would never get home. Mr. Ursel has informed us that some of the items in the station are relics from previous tenants in the building. I thought we were the first thing in this building since the original K-Jam closed up. He says we're the first public thing to be in here, but who knows who lived here and for how long. Anyway, these seem to be a bunch of practical jokers. I don't know. These things look pretty old. <laughs> Ooh, uh, there's the main office phone. Uh, I'm going to go get it. Right. Well, I don't know about you guys, joke or not. I want to hear the next installment of this little series. Let's see, which one should we pick next? How about October 20th, 1923? October 20th, 1923. Edward King here at 11.25 p.m. Howard is running my equipment. This is the first chance I've had to record since the incident of the 11th. The station nearly caught fire. Luckily, I was able to call in the fire brigade, and Howard was kindly enough to use his jacket to smother the flames near the table. However, Howard and I have felt renewed invigoration in our quest to record these events. We have no doubt that some youthful pranks are behind this, perhaps from students at Miskatonic University, who this last fall lost their radio station, it would eventually become KJAM. Whatever the cause, the fire most assuredly left a peculiar mark. On the frame above the station door, the words, and I'm trying my best with this, Lala Semokeb Heted Dini Ehetni. I have no idea how this was accomplished. However, another strange incident occurred today. A man dressed in solid black, from tie to jacket, shoes to shirt, <coughs> accosted the time of Miss Ledoux this afternoon. She had been making her way back from lunch when she suddenly stopped outside the door of the station by this man. 
He was bald, she claimed, with a dead smile. Anyway, he calmly explained that he believed that anyone involved in the station must hardly leave before the worst events befell them. I myself stood 50 feet into the park smoking when I realized that the man was becoming gruff with Miss Ledoux. I asked him to leave, and when he would not, we tussled, leading to my loose tooth and his rather badly brandished nose. Either way, he made a statement so ludicrous it shook us both to the core. He said, and I quote, Fine, you fools, you may realize that... <coughs> excuse me, fine, you fools, may you realize that history repeats itself again and again again and once again. Once the fellow disappeared amongst the traffic, I tended Miss Ledoux's hurt pride and wrist, and we made our way inside, only to discover our entire office rummaged and destroyed. Papers were flung every direction, and in the center of the room was a single burn mark in the shape of a large open eye with a slitted iris. Howard and myself investigated as to the man with the local authorities, and Miss Ledoux continued to retell her tale to the police so that they may find this man. We decided to make a recording of the events. Until next time, good night. If this is a joke, it's the best one I've ever seen. It's so detailed. Yeah, I've got to say, uh, whoever did this, they were highly dedicated. Uh... Right. Well, here, let's open it up for discussion. You know that station number, so call in. Fake or fact? Yes, uh, call in and tell us your thoughts. Yeah. Uh, amazing joke or fantastic tale? Amy J, the DJ, <laughs> here at K Jam. What do you say, listener? Fact or fake? Fake, with a capital F. If you're trying to drum up publicity, stop. If someone pulled that on you, props to them. That's some crazy work. Thanks for calling, jerk. Ricky X here. Fact or fake? I'm betting you say fake. That's fake. Uh, someone is, like, definitely screwing with you guys. But, like, love the show. Keep doing what you're doing. Amy J, you're, like, totally my homegirl. <laughs> well, thanks, guys. Oh, thanks. <laughs> you're my homegirl, too, anonymous caller. <laughs> so that's two fakes and no facts? One fact. Thanks for being a good sport. <laughs> <coughs> no jokes. I'm saying fact. And I'm warning you. Stop playing these tapes. And who do we have on the line here? This is your last chance. Stop the tapes. I'm begging you. <coughs> Well, that was interesting. Now here's some music. Thank you. 
well, we've got ourselves a phenomenon. <laughs> During the break, we had a record-breaking 25 callers asking Ricky and me to keep playing these records. Fake or not, <laughs> it's a sensation. I'll say so, Amy. So, as the rule of show business goes, give the people what they want. All right, I'll cue up this next record. <laughs> Amy, did you did you say something? Amy? Amy, what the heck? Next record coming up. Don't play jokes, Amy. Don't play into the hype. <laughs> what? Edward King, October 30th, 1923. Time is 11.24 p.m. It's been several days since the last recording, and things are really beginning to worry Miss Ledoux, myself, and Mr. Howard. While the other workers of the station believe that nothing is amiss, they just simply refuse to talk about the incidents of increasing intimidation. Not three days ago, the rainy season began once again in autumn. As is usual during this time, the station stays on air several hours extra each night for the ships in the bay and the surrounding area to be aware of the dangers. During this time, many volunteers run the late shows. One regular of this time is young Elmore Connor, a student of the radio division of Miskatonic. Elmore is a happy and caring young man, but as of late, of the late storm, when Elmore was broadcasting, suddenly, as listeners have informed us, he heard a strange noise and took several moments to make sure no burglar was in the studio. He didn't return to the microphone for several minutes. Finally, Mr. Ledoux was informed by telephone, and I was called and made my way to Mr. Ledoux's and drove to the studio. When we arrived, we discovered Elmore cowering on the floor, rolled into a ball, screaming. His eyes were bloodshot, like he hadn't blinked in his whole life. And beside him was a, the powder room's mirror, shattered in shards covering his left arm and leg. Elmore has been in the hospital several days now. And that night, as I picked him up and Miss Ledoux looked him over, I felt a breeze caress the back of my neck. And I know it must sound completely insane, but I swore I heard a chuckle as the air brushed my collar. Elmore continually rants about the mirror. Something was in the mirror, he claims. Mr. Howard consulted immediately. He was very quiet and invited me to do some research on the history of the land. Miss Ledoux and I will go to the library tomorrow and see... Miss Ledoux! Did you hear that? Did you hear that? My God. The breeze. It's back. Get away from the radiator. It's going to blow. This... This is completely... I, I don't know anymore if this is... KJM Radio, you're live with Amy and Rick. not play these records. I am begging you. All right. I'm getting to the bottom of this. I'm making a few calls and doing some Googling to find this out. One way or another, this mystery ends tonight. We'll be right back after this. Do you suffer from problems in your lower back? Do you wish that you didn't wake up in the middle of the night screaming? Well, Dr. Eric Patterson can help with the new Patterson Back Clinic in the north side of Arkham. We specialize in scoliosis and other diseases of the spine. Be sure to stop in at the corner of Maple and Ochre. And we're back. Amy here. I've got on the line with me Mr. H.L. Phillips, a noted historian. He's offered to shed some light on the situation. Mr. Phillips? Thank you, Miss Amy. You called me and asked if I knew anyone by the name of Mr. Howard or Mr. Edward King, or at least of the history of KJAM Radio in Arkham. Well, I have. Or at least heard folk tales. You see, the man in question, Mr. Howard, that is, is my grandfather, or was, he was very interested in the off-color occurrences of Arkham. One of his dearest friends, and indeed one of the most prominent and forgotten members of the community, was Mr. Edward E. King, who fully grasped the importance of radio as early as 1918. 
He served in Flanders. You can find the information in the local Miskatonic library. He graduated there with a degree in public speaking. At the university is where he met my grandfather, and together they began to investigate strange rumors. However, as to the fate of Mr. King, there is no record. The last time my, uh, my grandfather spoke of him was before he disappeared one night. All he said was that Mr. King had done more service to the people of Arkham than anyone would ever know. There is no obituary for Mr. King, and Miss Ledoux hasn't been heard from herself in several years. As for KJAM, it was originally created by several students interested in radio, all led by a man named Ursel. They got into trouble with the school board for broadcasting several strange and political controversial subjects, and the station was taken away from the college and created as a business, run by William Sanford Jr. and managed by Miss Dorothy Ledoux. Mr. King was hired by the second week, and really little else happened of note until the radio station had a tremendous fire and boiler explosion, rendering the place useless and thought of as haunted. Then the crash came in 29, and the station boarded up in 38. It remained that way until you folks started using it again. Hope it helped. Uh, Ursel? There was a man named Ursel? <laughs> it, it does quite a bit. Uh, thank you, Mr. Phillips. Good night. Good night. Don't let the bed bugs bite. What's going on here, Amy? <laughs> I don't know. I'll cue up the next record. No, uh, Amy, please. I'll do it. Relax. People probably want to hear you. I'll, I'll be back. All right. <laughs> well, a strange night up here at a station. I hope it's bringing some entertainment at least. Uh, anyways... Funny story. The other day, I was at the... <laughs> Rick? <laughs> Rick? Here, Amy. Uh, I, I I heard some... You heard it, too? Yes. Oh, thank God. I thought I was going crazy. Well, what about the next record? I, I don't know. I, I checked. There's a few missing. I just put in the next closest date in, okay? Well, all right. But let's listen. Edward King... November 30th, 1923, the time is 11.24 p.m. I'm making the recording in a new setting. Uh, behind Miss Ledoux's, I mean, Dottie's desk. <laughs> As I stated in the last few recordings, the information on this land was finally given to us by the Bureau of Land Management. We got the letter tonight, and Mr. Howard is with us. I will now read aloud the information within. Let's see here now. Purchased by Mr. Sanford, undeveloped, nothing of interest, uh, Ah, here. Archaeological anthropological findings. According to the report of Dr. Richard Hannigan of the Bureau, he discovered that at some point under five feet of crust that there were archaeological remains of an ancient Indian site containing foreign and strange markings on pieces of pottery. Dr. Hannigan also discovered a small statuette now in the property of Miskatonic University of a small winged humanoid thing. Marked on the side was a broken version of the Algonquin language. When translated by a specialist in New York, it was a jumbled mess stating Lal Semokeb Heted Dene et Ni. Same phrase that... My God, the same phrase is encrusted upon the door frame. Oh my God, buddy. Quick, quick, get me a pencil. I, I may have just stumbled onto something. Elmore told us that the thing was looking in the mirror backwards. Maybe if we... Oh, th thank you, Donnie. Let's try putting this phrase through backwards. The, the way you would read it in the mirror. All right, give me a moment. Um, I. T-H-E-E-N-D. In the end. In the end what? In the end... D-E-T... In the end... Death. Death. In the end, death becomes... All. Oh. In the end, death becomes all. Dear God, didn't you hear that? In the lobby, dear God. Dear God, I would quickly the lamp. Amy? What was that? 
I don't know. I'm calling Mr. Ursel. I- I'm coming with you. Um, here's some music. <laughs> He can't come. He won't answer his phone. Do you have the next record ready? Uh, Yes. It's second to last. It's clear into 1924. Okay. Here we go. Ed King. March 14th, 1924. Time, 11.23 p.m. Dottie is beside me, a shotgun in her hand. I hold in my hands the small statuette that we stole from the university at the suggestion of Mr. Howard. Mr. Howard is currently, bravely, in the basement. Hello. I'm recording this in case something goes wrong. The librarian, Dr. Armitage, was able to give us some information on the statuette. It has no name, but has appeared across several hundred pieces of native art. It is a revered thing. A feared thing. Dottie and I have not slept the last three days, just last night. For the fifth time, Ursel and his mob tried to steal the thing from us. I fought him with my bare hands. One of them is dead, I suppose. Mr. Howard's pistol did the trick, scaring them away. I am happy and thought. Dottie has shown nothing but compassion and care for me through this ordeal. Tomorrow at noon, we, we will be married. I can't be more thankful for that. Dottie has been the only level-headed one among... Okay. How it is returned with a sample of the clay of the ground. I will now compare it to this book here. Uh, yes, it's a match. Page 847, section 32, Howard. Now we will get to the, um, to the bottom of this whole ordeal. Yes, there it is. I'll, I'll, I'll simplify and summarize it for the recording. Many thousands of generations ago, when beasts and men were but thorns to the sides of the gods, there were side beings of uncontrollable power. They, as they have come to be known, were called demons. And they walked the earth feasting and killing whatever they chose. None dared to stand against them. As fact, many actually began to worship them. And specifically one, called the Walk. And down it reaped vengeance on whatever it chose. Not out of hate, but of pleasure. The Walk took joy from simply tormenting the minds of many, driving them insane, till finally a group of men discovered ancient spells of yog sagoth and trapped him near the ocean, its home. And they laid rules that all tribes for eternity were not to venture into the mile of square land that contained the walker. But over time, people were 
rebel trying to release their imprisoned master. And all have failed. This land is called Yakan Wate Kid. I can't vocalize the name. It's impossible in the English language anyway. Its precise geographic coordinates are our own. It plays with us. Fun. Kill nine men and drove a child insane. Fun. Amy, Amy, I don't know what's going on, but please, please don't play the next record. We have to. We have to. Listen to me very carefully. I am Dottie Ledoux, and what you are doing is horrid. You cannot know the repercussions of playing these tapes. For the love of God, you both are in danger, alone in that place. You two must leave quickly. Ed didn't return from the station. Please... Please, stop while you can. There are things in that place. Horrid things. D Dottie Ledoux? You're Dottie? Miss Ledoux, is this a joke or is... Miss Ledoux? Miss Ledoux? The, the phone isn't working. Amy, let's go. Yes. Why would they lock? And I don't know why the doors would lock, okay? Unless... Don't say it. Do you think we're still on air? Maybe. Who knows? The lights are out. We've got one choice, Rick. We've got to play that last tape. No! You heard her. She said not to. I'm playing it. No! Edward King. October 20th. 11 Sharp. 1924. This, I fear, is the last recording I shall make. Or at least I hope. I don't know why I bother. There's not a single way that these tapes will reach anyone. If I succeed. The walker has grown in strength. They move faster. It destroys more. It's almost strong enough to leave. I cannot let this happen. I know full well that I... Dottie, if somehow you ever hear this, know that I love you. And that I'm sorry we never found time to actually marry. But I love you. I love you. And Howard, dear Howard, thank you for your many years of friendship. I'm in the basement now, preparing before it finds me. I plan not to kill the thing. There is no way to kill it, even if I had the valor, no. I simply will trap it again. I've worked for years on radio, and struggled to bring it here to Arkham. It only makes sense that I should destroy it as well. I'm affixing several fireworks to the main boiler. Each has the name of someone we've lost. Elmore, William, Heck, Lester, Goodman. Now, if you're listening to this tape, God help us. I have failed. But here's what you must do if you wish to live. Go nowhere alone. Carry a mirror with you everywhere. It... it's afraid of it for some reason. You cannot destroy it. But you can trap it. By simply destroying the structure built on the ground. By destroying this door of sorts. It cannot walk away. It's trapped once again in the earth. So you must destroy the building. Good luck with that. <laughs> I'm hoping this should do the trick. So no other will have to face this fate. <laughs> I hear it. I feel it. It's close to me. I have no time. Howard. Goodbye, old chap. Sorry. I love you. Amy? I'm here, Rick. We've got to go to the basement, then. Gotta blow this place sky high. How? I don't know. But we have to try. Or find some way out. 
We can get to the basement from the emergency exit under the desk. Let's go. No, I'm staying right here. Please, Rick, I need you. No! Fine. I'm going. He said not to go anywhere alone. Then come. No, just keep talking to me. All right. What's it like down there? Dusty? Old? You see anything? Yes! Oh, it's a glowing green here with giant eyes! <laughs> Boom! Ha <laughs> ha, don't joke. How's it going? I said, how are you doing? Amy? This is the U.S. Radio Service. We've lost all contact and connection with this station. Please tune your dial to another channel. In the near future, a team will arrive to investigate the problem. In the meantime, switch to another channel. This is the U.S. Radio Service. We've lost all contact and connection with this station. Please tune your dial to another channel. In the near future, a team will arrive to investigate the problem. In the meantime, switch to another channel. This is the U.S. Radio Service. We've lost all contact and connection with this station. Please tune your dial to another channel. In the near future. You're listening to Golden Age Radio Theater. Brought to you by the studios of KDUR, Fort Lewis College's own radio station. Located here in Durango, Colorado. Tonight's story was in no way telling of any story based on any person, living or dead. Any similarities are purely coincidental. You've just listened to There's Something in the Air, an original story created and written by Avery S. M. Martinez. Tonight's musical guests were Two Tiered Thoughts and Nelson Walker. In tonight's cast, we heard Molly Quinn as Amy J, Avery Scott as Ricky X, and several other voices were provided by the actors associated with Golden Age Radio Theater. KDUR is proud to bring you the Golden Age Radio Theater every Sunday night at this same time, same station. The ideas, characters, plots, and stories are worked on collaboratively by Avery S. M. Martinez and his team. Tonight's music was provided by Orochi's Lullaby, and our online presence is monitored by George Bangs.